Off. Hello and welcome to Mostly Off Tough Pick Plays, the One Ring, second edition, here, there and every door with special guest Hobbit. Episode 7, which I'm going to call, I don't know what I'm going to call it actually, oh there you go. Um, I'm joined by, I'm joined by the usual guys plus guest Hobbit um, and uh and I've decided just now that if you've got to episode seven, you kind of know who we are. So we're us. Um, and therefore, I'm going to skip intros. Is that okay with everybody? Yeah. Hello yeah. from us. Cool. You know us. You trust us. That's a story I've told. That's right. Um, and just imagine that there's like Bert <coughs> and Gudrun's horse Nana. <clears throat> very different sound. Yeah, yeah, there are like horses all over going, oh yeah, that's a pretty good accent. Well done, Paul. Good good horse accent. Um and also Thomas who's just a stroppy teenager. It's not stroppy actually, he's is well balanced as the teenagers go, I think. I've decided. So welcome to episode seven. That'll all get cut. Um The Dreams are Reasonably pleasant. Othaniel and Esteldor dream less because they're up. Acting as guardians, as is the role of rangers. You guys see nothing, but you hear the Nika Breakers, the incessant noise throughout the night. And even in the cold, dark night, there's bugs keep sucking the blood from you and scratching and itching around. Thomas wakes up in the morning. Oh, that was, that was a bit good. Oh, oh. Mm. Goes out, relieves himself. The camp starts to break a little bit. Uh, um, a cell door? Yes? Um, he points out. Is that is that smoke coming from over there? Or is it just just fog? And you can see thick grey cloud of smoke rising from off in the direction of the barrows. Mm, that's not fog. That's like smoke from a fire. We're not alone. Mm. You should tell the others. Estelle Dor says somebody else is here. Wait, who? Who is here? Girl. There's smoke off towards the burrows. Oh, like a single stack of smoke, or just a more like dispersed. It's like a single stack of smoke from like a um a campfire. Ah. Uh. Oh, if and if we if we see uh, their smoke, then they could see our smoke. We are both Possibly. In extremely wet wood, so there's plenty of smoke. Um. Oh. Okay, you Kurt, you sound good. a little bit more distant for me. Sorry, I was relieving myself. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um. Should I wake? Should I wake the Hobbit up? Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. He looks, he looks so peaceful. So, Tolman, Tolman's already awake. He's oh. he's oh. barely been able to sleep. Um, mainly thinking about Esteldur's song, and in fact, he he would have likely come over to Esteldur a couple of times in the night with a few questions about it. <laughs> Such as. If the rangers are protecting the Shire, how come he's never seen one? Ah, well, we we try to keep our presence um, unnoticed. It's best that um, the folk of the Shire don't know we're there. I'd explain it, to him. But how do you elude? How do you elude the bounders and the sheriffs of the Shire? Expert hunters, some of them are. 
Well, we did not enter the board right into the borders of the shire. We we usually stay to the edge. He would so have many more. Disturb left. you? Yeah, yeah. If you're many protecting the shire, if you're protecting the shire, how come Mrs. Margaret's cow got stolen that summer? <laughs> <laughs> That kind of thing. Okay. <laughs> so, um, Esseldor is like hassled by Thomas on the one hand. Do you know what? <laughs> maybe, maybe we could get Gudrun a shield as well and she could have the links on that. And then there's, what about protecting the Shire? From... <laughs> uh, uh... <laughs> if Esseldor was to get on a bus, he'd be sat next to the mad people on the bus. That's clearly the kind of character that he is. Me in real life. <laughs> okay, so now, Tolman, uh, my hobbit friend, um, <clears throat> over uh, at the Lonely Mountain, we have heard of your expertise, uh, as in hobbits, uh, of your ability to be cunning and resourceful and to go unseen. Could you? Go and unseemly go and check whose campfire that is. Or Bargar. Uh, yeah. I reckon I could. Let me just check my character sheet. What's that? All right. <laughs> I am I am one of the sneaking around is one of my, my best skills. My mother always tells me. It was only bad luck, really, when I got caught sneaking into Andy Roper's rope factory that one time. And then it was the time that I got caught sneaking into the Mother Mouse. But apart from those two times, I've never been caught sneaking anywhere I want to go. Quite nice, impressive. Go, go there and, and, and see if you can find some jam. I will, uh, would you accompany I will go with yeah I'll, I'll happy to happy to come along to offer potential protection should it be needed or not okay so you two come out of the the ruins that you spend the night in and you can see set against the grayness of the the morning there's a thick plume of grey smoke rising very obviously from a campfire off in the direction of the barrows. You start to make your way over there. The, the marshland at times meets stonework. Most of it ruined. There's toppled statues. Any of the statues that are around here have had crosses put through their eyes. Anything that would have been holding a, a, a weapon, the, the weapon has been smashed through but you kind of make your way through the greyness of the marshland um, as you're doing so you come across signs of uh, of other activity there's what looks to be um, fabric from you imagine a tent kind of torn and just pushed to one side there's half um, attempts at dug tunnels there's been an attempt to lever a statue over to try to get underneath it but nothing seems as if it's been particularly finished very well but could you make Any me signs uh, of conflict? um no not really more signs of um of, of a recent attempts to um to 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 ferret around amongst Anything that looks like it might be a hidden nook or a cranny. Um, Try to drain some of the marshlands to kind of get into places, but none of them are all at any great degree of success. But could you make me um, make me stealth rolls, please? Considering, Considering the gravity of the situation, I will invest one point of my hope. Okay. If only I'd done the same. I've got a one on the feet die. 
and then uh, to, yeah, total of eleven, twelve. I I am drawing a bit of a blank here. Sorry, one point of hope is an extra die. Yeah, an extra dice. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. So this is okay. Not not much really changed. So just just a success. A very good one, but just a very normal success. Yeah. Okay. Um. So you're making your way towards that area. It takes you. 40 odd minutes so it's not it's not a hop skip and jump you're not moving that no. fast maybe it's about half a mile away from where you are let's say um, and you kind of come there's not much in the way of cover but it is reasonably with foggy and you can see there's a an entrance way um, in the side of a small mound but the marsh is quite close offset to it and in front of the entrance way there's um, what looks as if it could have been a courtyard or maybe it's a floor that all the walls have gone quite small and there's a number there's, there's three black cloth mud covered in mud tents that have been pitched there two man tents maybe and in the centre of that there's a fire billowing smoke out there are four or five, six, now seven human figures there, covered in mud. They all just look really weary, totally soaked. Quite hefty, big, martial-looking figures, armed. They've got weaponry, um, men, women. And they've, they've got a hand cart that looks as if it's got various construction tackle on it. And they've piled a load of um, rocks and planks against the, the entrance way. And there's, there's an argument at the moment that's, that's being engaged in. Your failure, um, Tolman, means that you kind of aren't able to get quite close enough to hear what's being said. They're not going to see you, but you're not going to be able to get quite close enough to be able to, to kind of hear what's being said. But Nathaniel, you get a little bit closer, um, able to kind of navigate through the marshway a little bit. We're not going in. That thing was, it was bloody awful. I don't care. We've got some stuff to take back to the captain. I don't want to risk my life going after them. It was your brother, says another man. You're going to leave your brother in there with that thing? And I'm not sure that the captain will be too happy. We aren't, it's meagre what we've got. Then the taller figure comes up, wipes his eyes. This is just bloody awful. What a shower of shit we've got ourselves into here. But we are going back in. I'm not leaving two of our own down there with that whatever it was. I don't look. Let's try and rest up a little. <coughs> oh, bloody mosquitoes. Try and rest up a bit. Have a, let's just let's have a day, maybe. I d no, we're going in today. Right, well, that's it. Decision made. We're all going to go back in there. Let's not bother ourselves with anything we find unless it's portable. We'll get the two of them and we'll get them back out. And then then we'll call it a day and we're heading back to Tharbad. I'll explain to the captain. And then if he wants, he can send some other bloody fool up here after us. So everybody just calm it. Put the bloody... Like, calm yourselves down. I know. I know it's bloody awful. And we're leaving the car. I don't give a... About the car, I'm not trudging that through the bloody marshes again. Paul, just uh, considering my calling as a treasure hunter, what uh, I want to assess what the situation is 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 it some sort of just uh, some sort of bandits trying to get some treasure? Is it like proper treasure hunters, some cultists trying to get trying to get a bit of a uh, an angle on, on what's, so the the, what's actually here? The the amateurs, okay, more of the bandit style than than anything else. Um, there's no religious iconography, and they don't seem to have the discipline of a religious iconography. Um, yeah. 
but they haven't engaged they themselves in any banditry yet. Sorry, Gudrun. Oh, they use Captain. Yeah, they use the word yeah. Captain, and they said, they and they, they talked about Tharbad. Yeah, 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 yeah. So there's a bit of a dedication because they they seem to want to go for something. Um, how far is the fellow Hobbit from me? It's twenty yards back. I will. Stood I will silhouetted try to against the sky. <laughs> I'll try to gently signal to him to get get the the others. You know, you know, she, she. you know, the the you know. The, I would send a text message, but I left my phone. He uses the international symbol for stuff. Um, <laughs> oh, Tolman's distracted by some interesting looking roots as he weeds. He recognizes the, yeah, yeah. The, the, quite nicely. You think so it's actually kind of... they may be cultivated? They may be one of the cultivars back in the um, the Shire. But these look like they're. That well, these look, here. Yeah, but these look like they've um, adapted more to the wet conditions. And if you're able to get yeah, them yeah. back, that could solve some problem. It could be you know there's a patch yeah. right down at the bottom of your uncle's farm where he can't grow anything in there because it gets waterlogged right. through the winter. But maybe. Oh right. They, these look a bit. Bit hardier, like, yeah. it looks like they might do quite nicely up in the West March. So, well, I'll take a few of these out, yeah, put them in my um, pack. Like. Can you oh, help what's, me with the what's that color up to? <laughs> Strange folk, these rangers. Uh, so, um, sorry, quick question on numbers. So, how, how many did we? Seven. Okay, I had to count them. Seven. <laughs> Um, so if if the Hobbit sort of gets my very active waving of hands and then sort of gets the message, then I will try to make my way closer, perhaps to some sort of encampment. I want to basically see if I can get some evidence. Well, he, he wants some of these, some of these cuspers here. Is that what he's after, or is he seeing something? Can I can I um, can I puzzle it out, Paul? Can I use a yeah, riddle? Yeah, go for it. I've got three dots in riddle. Uh, Tengwa. What's that? That's 11, 13, 18. With 18, the target 30, number of 15. Yeah. yeah, okay, so what do you want to do with the Tengwa? Uh, make haste. Yeah, make haste. okay. So you can tell that he... What, so what are you trying to tell Tom to do? Go and get the others? Yeah. Okay, yeah, he wants you to kind of go and get the others. Okay. Yeah, I'll dash. I'll, I'll drop a few cuspers and then sort of scramble back, grab, grab them, shove them into the pack, yeah, yeah, yeah. And run off. Yeah, yeah. Um, let me think about this. So, so Nathaniel was going. YMCA. What's that mean? <laughs> Um, <laughs> walk like a new what? <laughs> walk like a new Minorian. Um, <laughs> I think that's the closest analog. Walk like you're in Harad. Um, uh, yeah. So okay. So you make haste. So you get back in twenty minutes. We'll say. So so. Um, what are you doing, Arthaniel? You you kind of like heading close. So you say. So they are in. They are all in one place. Yes, and they're all in the centre of the fire somewhere. Yeah, and, and and they've got they've got bits of kit with them, um, and it's not a stretch of the imagination to work out that they've been the people kind of like doing this stuff. They've yeah. barricaded the entrance to this barrow, um, and now they're kind of settling themselves down, sitting down, a couple of private conversations, oiling the sword with a. Dirty rag, you're not sure if it's cleaning it or making it worse, frankly. Yeah, okay. The, and the whole um, place, the whole where, where they are at the moment is because it's been so trodden, it's just a it's just a quagmire. Quag, yeah. Okay, well, I will uh, I will use the time waiting for the others to, should it come to any problems, I want to be in a good position and not, maybe not higher ground, but some sort of, uh, I want to assess the situation so that 
yeah, if there's any sort of conflict, then I won't be in a, in a, in a, in a better position than them. Yeah. You know, I yeah, have yeah. the advantage. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so Arthaniel covers himself all in mud and hides so that the predator can't see him. I'm, I'm already covered in mud. <laughs> Good sir. Come on, kill me. <laughs> <laughs> um, Talman arrives back. Oh, hi, Talman. Talman says. You're muted. Oh, uh, no, not you. No, the other one. Where's the dwarf? I'll tell him. Yeah. What did you uh, find? Uh, that ranger fella, he was doing some funny signs. I think he said there were seven, seven people or maybe seven ponies. I'm not quite sure, but he looked like he might want us to go and help him. Oh, all right. So does it look like trouble? Trouble in Tharbad, he said. I don't know, but quite possibly. But then I also I found some I found some uh, very nice looking cuspers. I don't know if you have them in Erebor. They probably don't grow there on the mountainside. They're very well, nice. Not on in the mountainside, they grow sort of upside down because uh, they sort of if they grow through the ground because they sort of start growing downward like that. So you. But uh, this, besides the point, if, if Arthaniel's in trouble, uh, let us not linger. And I grab my axe and my shield. And my axe. A shield? You've got a shield, yes. Barnack? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the shield revealed. Yes, and it's a very nice shield. It's actually that looks like my, a lovely um, shield. It was my valor uh, reward. Punning. <laughs> I think the name of the episode is Shield Revealed. Mm -hmm. Oh, right, we're going. Oh, good. I, I just finished the sausages for you. But if we're going. <laughs> Gert looks longingly at the sausages. Okay. Picks up his act reluctantly. Oh, quick, quickly, shove it in your mouth and chew on the way. <laughs> you bite your... in the grease. Put, put the axe in your mouth, chew it as you go. <laughs> oh, cool. I can take I can take Gudrun Preserver. It might taste some blood. Oh. <laughs> I've been cool. I've been Googling synonyms for protection <laughs> and guardian. <laughs> okay, you start to make your way through the um through the, the marsh. Um Tolman, what's your plan when you can like get in close to this destination? Are you going to tell anybody to like be quiet or anything of that ilk? Yeah, I think I think Tolman um, Tolman would have inferred enough from. I mean, ra Rangers are adept at hand signals. Tolman just doesn't know the signals, but he, <laughs> in his mind, he's pretty clear that there's some kind of danger here, and that. Even though he's not used to um, adventures of this scale and working with others, that we should probably uh, probably be. Also, it's in his nature. He's a hobbit, so he's all of these these big folk. Even the dwarf grunting the whole way, making a load of racket. So uh, yeah, he'll be he'll be hushing them up. I think Barnack is probably the least grunty dwarf. That I met, but probably still. Well, I'm still not very athletic anyway, so it's more like huffing and wheezing. Yeah, yeah. And also. Sounds of exertion, but not manly at all. And, and explaining why Thomas can't have the shield even just to try it out. Um, okay, so what's everybody <laughs> doing? How are you advancing towards this situation? Situation. Uh, well, you know, Gert's got his axe, and he's uh, he's kind of looking out for Gudrun and Thomas. For the most part, he's concentrating on making sure that they're um, they're advancing. He pro he probably almost won't get stuck himself again because he's looking out for them. But then, um, you know that that that. That stuck with him, and so he extricates himself. 
And Angulon is strings um, her bow, uh, but um, she is she is puzzled. And and then say to uh, whispered to to Gert, what are what are we going to do with this? Well, I know I know stories about seven ponies, maybe with seven dwarfs, but. I don't think that they live in this kind of marshes, and uh, and I st I stringed my bow because I saw Barnak uh, bringing his shield and and axe. But are we going to fight someone? Have you understood from this little fellow there? I, well, I was just thinking it's probably eight. better to be. Ready, then not. An old but you know, saying. if we show ourselves armed and ready to fight to uh, f to people unaware, they might think that we are going to attack them. It's not very welcoming to be in front of stranger foreigners armed and ready to fight. Perhaps Gudrun and I could present ourselves in a um, a more friendly fashion while you lurked in the shadows, ready to protect us if something goes awry. Yeah, it'd be like rangers. We could be like guarding in the background. Come on, Estelle Dole, you can show me how he's done. Hmm. Yes. As he splashes yeah. into a pot. Oh, fuck. Oh. Protect me from, uh, from afar. Yeah, I've, I've been practicing See. throwing my spear. Yes. <laughs> As I still don't know, it's mostly into his foot. But yeah. But, <laughs> let me ask you an, a, a last question, uh, friends. Um, but should we, should we meet them or should we avoid them? Are, are they in our way at all? To our our goal, I guess. So you know that your uh, you, your intention was to get to the, so the barrow was mm -hmm. what you're after, but the landmark yeah. that you knew it was near was the king's chair. Uh, I I would have an answer for that, but I'm I'm a bit further away. What's my range on? Ranger talk. Arthaniel is um, is concealed, yeah. and you so, haven't got you haven't got a complicated mirror system set up to do oh, the hand signals. And Tommen, uh, uh, um, do you know where where Arthaniel is? Can you find them? Yeah, he's just over there. You just need to follow this wee path. See this badger trail here. Follow this badger trail. We turn right at that elm, that series of elms here, and just sneak through here. We've got mind up for these nettles, mind. That's where the cuspers were. That's that's the patch of cuspers. Don't touch them. I'm going to have them. He's um, T Tolman. Tolman's like laser focused on getting a bit closer. He's naturally inquisitive, so he wants to sneak, kind of past Arthaniel, and um. He kind of wants to ditch the big folk for now. <laughs> Tomlin, um, Tomlin says, look behind you, there's a three-headed monkey, and then he's gone. <laughs> uh, Paul, I just want to do something before they actually get there. Is, is there a way for me to see them as they approach? Uh, make an awareness roll. Are you guys coming in stealthy or not? Oh, I would be. Okay. Uh, those who want to stealth, make a stealth roll. If you're not going to stealth, can you just put your arm up so I know? Yeah, I'm not going to so I see you all. No. I've got yeah, this. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah, there's no point in me even trying, so I physically can't. Okay, yeah. Thomas, <laughs> Tom, Tom, I can stealth. Yeah, got it. Thomas is going to try and will succeed really well uh, i didn't i didn't succeed <laughs> he helps you out 
He uses okay. his Tengwar to help you out. Wow. Ooh. Well, He's like, well, I'd like to, well, I'd like to say I'm inspired. While, while we go, uh, I asked, uh, I asked Gart, oh, well, and when we, once we met them, uh, what are we going to ask them or trying to, mm. to do? And, well, we could say that they are going, uh, we are a hunting party, uh, hunting for a lynx. That's right. Why not? It's, <laughs> it's worked sorry. before. <laughs> Plan um, A, as we call it. Because uh, I, I want to basically, if I can spot them, I want to do something before they get there. So if, if they are further afield, I want to be able to do an action. I'm, I'm doing the ranger sign for move your mic closer to your mouth. <laughs> oh, damn it, sorry, yes. Uh, sorry, what I was saying is if I can spot them, then I would want to make some some action. You, you can definitely them. see um, Gert, Gudrun, Barnack. They're like stepping their way through the marshes, not making any great right. attempt to, to hide themselves. You you can see Tolman is kind of like racing off, uh, separate from yeah. those. Estelle Dor yeah. um, is kind of like looking in awe at Tomas, who is like, when I left you, I was but the learner. Now I am the master. <laughs> As they stealth off. Sorry, um, Tolman, you were going to say something. Well, so I was going to suggest that um, I would be so inquisitive that I would be inspired should I spend a point of hope to sneak yeah, and okay. try and get yeah. get pretty close to yeah. uh, to yeah. these. Makes I mean, sense. keeping in mind, Solomon hasn't actually seen what Arthaniel's looking at yet, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you make, make your inspired sneak roll. What do you wish to do, Arthaniel? You can see Gudrun... Gert and Barnack kind of like steadily approaching. It doesn't look like the others have seen them. Yeah. So, is there any way I can exploit the situation? For example, they have some weapons away from them. There's some, you know, just exploit the situation in a sense to give them a, a disadvantage. Um, disadvantage even, on what? Or, or, or well, in what way? I just, I'm even to, I'm, I'm willing to break the, the sort of cloak of invisibility, if you like, just to even make them uh, make their situation worse so for example if they have some sort of portion of weapons stashed somewhere no there's I no would... there's no like weapons stashed the weapons that they have are beside them the kind of the main the main thing that you could do would affect the little handcart that they have which is loaded with like carpenter's tools or mason's tools that, that kind of thing a couple of um, crowbars but they're all they're all armed. You said they're armed, yes. But they're, their arms aren't drawn, and they don't look. Yeah. They haven't. They haven't got. They haven't got substantial arms. There's no archers there that you've seen, yeah. um, or anything like that. Okay, so I will just uh, at that point. I'm probably just going to uh, to confront them. Okay, okay, so you're going to confront them before these these arrive. Yeah, just just before, just to give me a, a few minutes sort of heads up, so I can get the benefit of the party then arriving and have the, you know give them a little bit of element surprise okay. that they are focusing on me and uh, so, he feels yeah. So so, so, so how I'll, how are you going to move? Sorry, how are you going to reveal yourself, Arthaniel? I'm just I'm just uh, coming out and uh, approaching them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I have Tom. a hood on. I have a hood on. Uh, in a sort of like a calm manner, just sort of just approach them and take my hood off as I as I come closer. Obi Wan Kenobi to the Sam people. Yeah, kind of, kind <laughs> of like yes. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Tolman, you were gonna say. So I was just gonna, I was gonna say, um, I got a couple of tangwars on my roll, so I don't know if I can, if I can inter intervene or, I mean, well, it sounds like our Daniel's getting right in there now. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know how I can use those. So you can gain some, so some additional I, knowledge as you kind of like getting closer, maybe a little bit more information about what's going on there. Um, do you, okay. you want to do faster? He, yeah, I'll, um, I'll gain insight then, I guess. Yeah. So Tolman, Tolman hasn't, hasn't drawn his, uh, any weapons at this point. 
because he's just kind of yeah. being nosy, basically. Yeah, okay. So um, so you've got closer than you were before and your curiosity um, as to what's happening uh, leads you to pay a great deal of attention to the situation. You can see the people here are best described as just weary. They're just plain fed up. They've got a couple of wounds, um, one of them a couple of wounds in their arms, um, and there's probably a couple a couple of distinct groups here. So, so they're all part of the same group, but there's a factions within that group. A couple who are kind of like muttering about really want to get off, and one who's um, and one faction that's adamant that they're going to be going in to the barrow again. The one faction that's adamant is led by the by the one who's you notice now got a couple of blue strips of cloth attached to their shoulder, um, and seem to have slightly better weapons um, than than the others. And the weaponry is um, to the extent that you know is is more like close quarters knife work than it is pitch battle weaponry. And then Arthaniel stands and um, the hooded kind of just detaches himself from the side of the marsh and you know, moves, strides forward to um, to the tents. Gudrun, Gert, Barnack, you can kind of see this as you're kind of moving down. Estelle Dor, um, Thomas, you guys can see this as well. What the bloody hell? The, these... Figures they stand up. Oh. Sorry, Gudrun. I say uh, I respond to, to to the voice with another voice. Hello, hello, good fellow. What fellow. the? Kind of like a couple of them start to draw very, this, this. Very this. good to meet you in this awful place. Very very happy to find a fire and gentleman in this well. Among these mosquitoes, you know. And then I, I go forward. Are you hunting? Are you hunters? Are you hunting something? Have you found something? Are you, are you with any uh, lately? I think oh. <laughs> Thomas stands up. <laughs> is there a, is there a oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. He is Gert from, from Bree and Gudrun from... Well, far away, I don't know if you know my town, and it's not, it's no importance. And he is my dear friend, Barnack, a dwarf of Herobor, if you know. Are you with well, I told you that this smoke would reveal friends in this dreary place. Put your bloody... Hail and well met. Put your bloody swords away. Which swords? No, it's, it's talk, so, so the leader's talking to, um, oh. to his group. Put them bloody away. Right. What the actual fuck is going on here? And he kind of like turns to Arthaniel. He turns back. Are you... Is that an authentic ranger yes, of the north? I, <laughs> I, was, I was trying to say that... Um, so, uh, fellow travellers, uh, you look like you're far away from your homes. And, yeah, we, we uh, bloody actual, are. And are in you, actual fact... Mm -hmm. Are you with this, them? This is the, yes, we, yeah, we all travel together, but more importantly, you are currently on a land important to my people, and I just wanted to know what you're doing here, what, what your role here is. How many of them are? How many are there of you? One, two, oh, yeah. three, yeah, we four. We don't travel with. I saw a young lad. Yeah. He shouted something about a lynx. <laughs> can I stay hidden, Paul? You can, yeah, yeah. yeah. Never mind Gudrun's shadow. You deal with us. It's okay, Thomas isn't going to be. I still do. They've got a lynx. <laughs> From a cloak every <laughs> Oh, what do you mean, your people? These are ruins. They're everybody's. Yes, but they, they have an important meaning to, to, to my people. And for generations, my people lived here, lived here. And uh, 
I just want to know what your business here is. Uh, we mean no harm or no trouble, but uh, you just seem a bit lost, and I thought I would see what's going on. Well, I'm here under the orders of the captain of Tharbad. I'm oh. Malga. The guy steps forward. And this is my crew. Okay. That's uh, very nice to meet you. I'm Arthaniel, and... Uh, I'm not going to call these uh, these folks my crew, but we travel together, and uh, it would be nice to know what your business is here. We're exploring the history of the lands north of Tharbad. What's your business here, Arthaniel, and <laughs> not crew? As I said, we are hunters. We are in a game. I can see we are hunting. a bow. Yes, we are, we are hunting for a lynx, a mythical animal that songs sings, sing that lurk in his heels. Look like this! It looks like around. this! Looks like this! <laughs> Thomas is holding the necklace that... I don't know. Um, don't know now it's about the links. Uh, anyway, um, so w w have you found any any a token of ancient history? Uh, there are several statues uh, broken, unfortunately. Uh, they were like that when we arrived. Please? They were, They've all been urinated on too. <laughs> they were like that when we arrived. Um, but how about... But if you have an... Yeah. I was just going to ask, if you haven't encountered a lynx, uh, <clears throat> if I may pry a little bit, you do seem... Some of you seem a little bit injured. Is there any danger that we should look out on as we are here hunting? Quiet. Well, how about we all come in and we meet like good people do... We've got some food and we can break some bread together and we can you know, maybe talk a little bit. I'm sure that there's a path where we can all obtain our goals. We've got as much right as anybody to be here. Absolutely. But there is... Everyone... I mean, they kind of like glances back at the barrow. The, there is some, some danger, I... And, and actually, there might be something that we could turn to all of our advantages, I think. I'm sure we can. Share information is, is something that usually um, gave advantages to all the ear that f get it. When travelers meet on the road, or in a bog, it is traditional to share stories, tales, and information, and food. Yeah. And, and it, down in Tharbad, we honour those traditions. It's well known that as the last uh, remnants of, um, of civilization in, in these parts. Um, now. Oh, great. For example, I don't know where where Tharbad uh, is and and so you can tell me something about your people, folks and well tales well how about you all come down here and he puts away any suggestion of drawing that pretty sharp sword he's looking at you Arthaniel I just would like to know a little bit more about your intentions here. Why have you come here? You now mentioned danger and you mentioned some sort of intentions. I know where you're from, but please, in the interest of building trust between the parties, why don't you share a little bit more? We told you why we're here. Well, how about we like, all come down and we have a little bit of food and we can share information then? Come on. I yes, attempt... I'll, I'll, I attempt to wave El Steldor off of coming out. 
I do not yeah, do any I I just he, kind uh, of do this. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, no clue if he knows what I'm doing. Thomas comes down. Did somebody mention food? <laughs> I will. So I will stay at the back. So I will be sort of visibly hesitant. I, obviously, we will do our thing, the, but I will just yeah, remain yeah. at the back. The, the food that they get out is much less quality than, than what you had. Sausages are conspicuous by their absence. Um, and it's mostly, at some point, it landed in the bog, you imagine, but they're, they're eating it as much. Well, but we, we can share also our food with you. Yeah, I've got some really good sausages, Thomas. Don't give I'll fry some up. <laughs> um, okay, um, well. well I, can I'll... I? Uh, yeah, but... <laughs> All right, I'll go. Um, so, as he's kind of invite, so you said he's sort of easing up on his sword and such. But as we are, the place where he's inviting us to sit down at, is he inviting us? Like, can I tell if it's like an like an obviously disadvantageous position for us? Like, are we walking into like a flank, make a battle, or some kind of a? All right. Well, oh, I make. Also? Yeah, yeah. Good eye. Yep. Is that an invitation to all? Oh, oh damn it. Dang it, dang it, dang it. Didn't. Yeah, you, you, <laughs> that was just two points yeah. under. That's unfortunate. One point under. Okay. <laughs> so you, you can't you can't tell whether it gives any great advantage or disadvantage. He's not trying to get his people to surround you and he's been very mm -hmm. he's been very deliberate about his actions. He's moving very slowly, he's keeping his hands out at all times and he's kind of making sure everybody else on his side is as well. Um so he's 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 in he's in kind of like wary and not trying to antagonize mode at the moment. Okay. But uh, before we 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 share our food, um, please let me ask you a question. Because in in Dale, very far away, we used to um, make a promise before share uh, give trust. So before giving trust, please. Uh, promise that nobody that sit together sharing food will arm in any way the other one. I pro I first promise. So, promise. Make a promise, and and then I will trust you because I think you are a honorable person, and then you. Well, you know. I I will I would sit at a, a relative distance, uh, very slowly and sort of gently. Not don't want to make any aggressive moves, but I will make point that I'm sitting at a little distance. Find a nice little comfortable rock, and just uh, begin to uh, sort of clean my weaponry. You know, it's it's been in the box, <laughs> so I just want to make sure. That, uh, not not in a very obvious way, but obviously just you know, that's sort of like. <laughs> I'm gonna sit there and just load my shotgun. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of like yes, yeah. calm and collected way. I just want to maintain eye contact constantly as I'm Could doing I it. Try a, a persuade roll to yes, um, persuade roll, please. Yeah, <laughs> with with um favored favored uh, because um, you're the um, first beautiful lady they've met in the bog. Oh yes, so I, I also use my my uh, a point of hope, and and so my trade fail. <laughs> yes, yes, of course, yeah. So three or oh, four, five, okay. So is Gandalf, and two sixes. So wow. is an extraordinary. Wow. Yeah. I'll be having those sausages. <laughs> oh, Thomas, please, are you so kind? Uh, would be you so kind to bring some sausages 
or for his friends. Yeah. Of course, yeah, yeah. I'll get the best ones out. Look, I, I, I know we got some from the store, but I got these from Gertz, um, from from his cupboard. Um, kind of like brings <laughs> brings them down, starts to fry them up. Um, what do you want to do with the, with the ten glass? So, um, give uh, um, have more information, people, uh, uh, kind of insight from other people around. What are they? What what tell what what they eyes tell? Yeah. What so, the eyes tell? So and, and uh, for the second one, um, oh, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe get. Um, with the answer of of the of Mag Malgor, uh, have some more information, not related directly to our task, but oh. yeah, okay. Um, so so assessing the scene and kind of how everybody the tension of it's been taken out of it a little bit, um, and it becomes even more clearly that they are ill-equipped, um, possibly for the journey as much as what they found here. Um, they've been frustrated throughout. They haven't achieved their goal at all, but they have really tried to block the barrow up. But there's three of the group who just keep looking over towards it every so often. Can't can't take their the attention away from it for for too long. And then you learn what. Um, Tolman learned they're weary. They've been involved in some kind of scrap before. They've not slept particularly well. One of them's pale, really quite pale. Sweat is standing out. You kind of thought maybe it was just the moisture in the air, but this is definitely sweat. One of the ones that was injured and it's kind of starting to shake a little bit involuntarily at the moment. Well, we won't start nothing if you don't start nothing, which might mean we're all about to start summer, but you kind of get what I mean. I give my word as a lieutenant of Tharbad, which is a town that crossed the Grey Flood further south in Minareth. Ah, uh, and to answer young lad's question. We were dispatched by the captain and lady of Tharbad to find out more of our heritage, find out more of the the lands to the north. And I guess we can take stories back, but trinkets and treasures, uh, I dare say, and any any books or scrolls what we found were to return back there. But we found no, no written words. Even I couldn't understand them, to be perfectly honest. But we did find a few baubles, I'll, I'll say, from in Barrow. But there's darkness that lurks in there, and it's got a couple of my group, and we're going back in there, because I'm not leaving them behind. We're not leaving them behind. So we could do with we could do with what you've got. And maybe maybe the library in Tharbad might have some books on this year links because it's an ancient place of learning or so it said. And that might be might be a way that we can Make it equal to yours. A fair offer. I just want to check. Just, I'm not going to do anything or say anything at this point. But am I okay? I mean, am I hearing this? And I'm in position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're hearing it. Yeah. yeah. Also, your mic. Yeah. Damn it. Sorry. <laughs> so, how about how about it? We're, we're going back in there. We're going back in there, and I'm, I'm shitting myself if I'm honest. But we're doing it because I'm not leaving. And then, 
we're going back to Thabad with whatever we've got. And I can see he's not happy about it. And I promise we won't take anything other than our people. What what awaits us in there? Should we help? I can't. I can't properly. Sorcery! Witchcraft! Evil! It was... It was cold. Whatever was in the air, it just came at us out of the darkness. Took two of us before we even knew. We heard the screams. I'm not proud of what we did. We fled. I, I fought trolls. I fought the scorn of womankind. I fought all sorts. And it chilled me to my bones. It got old in my heart and it squeezed it and I had to flee. I don't know. I wish you hadn't ever bloody opened the door. <laughs> I must pay you really well if you've ventured on such a dangerous journey. And so well equipped. Well, it's easy to find you. I haven't got the equipment when you get to the place you're going. It's not so easy when it's all beer and pies back in Thabad, isn't it? Oh, beer and pies. Oh. We're done. We'll head back and I'll make my peace with Captain. Whatever awaits is better than out here. What about your mates that you have? We're taking them back. Inside. We're going after them. And I'd like your help, all of you. What's, to what's Tolman do doing? Does he have the patience for this? <laughs> Tolman. Yeah. Um. Unfortunately, he's he's misreading the situation, and um, because of his fairy blood, he uh, he's got. Uh, he's got a, an idea in his head and he's thinking oh, it might just work I might just get these these folk out of a pickle here so it starts creeping good closer good to camp yeah okay Gudrun what are going to say uh, uh, Gudrun's fair face grows uh, pale uh, once she heard the, the the word sorcery and but then um, somehow is uh, her bold nature um, <laughs> wins <laughs> and and then uh, get closer to the man and ask it um, with a low tone I cannot speak for my friends but I can speak for myself and I will help you in your quest. But please, I have a favor to ask you. Uh, could you keep the, the, the boy that is going to take the sausages out of this uh, business? Some of your men could stay behind and entertain him with some task apparently honorable uh, in order to avoid him any danger I'd killed two men when I was his age but I see what you mean that place isn't it's not right for a young gun I I will do that Thank you. And he doesn't know what, what are, we are going to do. And maybe I will, we will sing about it when all is over. But till now, nobody has to, to tell him what, what's happening. If that's what you wish. Tolman, you're getting closer to the camp. 
So I'm assuming Tolman hasn't really heard the intricacies of this conversation. He doesn't know the detail of what's being discussed. Okay. And um, he, uh, but he can see things have have sort of calmed down from a potential uh, potential clash. So he starts creeping closer to camp, <clears throat> and as he as he uh, as he nears the group. His sort of posture shifts a bit, and he adopts a, a lofty gait, walks walks forwards, clears his throat a little bit. Greetings, I am Bilbo Baggins of the Shire, and I am here to hunt for treasure. And I believe you have found some, and you would like my help. Is he one of yours? Is he I one of yours? I take a knee and bow before mighty Bilbo Baggins, the saviour of Erebor. Ah, yes. King Dane, your army of dwarves are approaching. They are very nearby. Oh, are they? <laughs> <laughs> Did you, um... Could you make me a um riddle? Yeah, a riddle check, please. Uh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. As as Barnack uh... is in surprise and probably did laugh exactly like uh, Nick did the Um I would like to spend a point of hope and mm -hmm. invoke fairy blood. Okay. because uh, he's kind of being mischievous here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really thinking that it will pay off somehow. So I'll spend a point of hope. Uh, riddle. Mm -hmm. I'm rolling five dice. Wow. Uh, what's that? Oh, that's a three... Six, 10, 15, 18, 22. Okay. Standard success. Target yeah. number 15. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, he doesn't respond to Bilbo Baggins at all. None of them do. Um, but he responds to the army of dwarves. King, King, King! Yes. You, you are seated with King Dane, nonetheless. King yes. Dane of... of over where all the dwarves come from. And you've an army? And you've agreed to help us with this army? It's a very big army. How's it Bigger going? than that, what they had at the Battle of the Five Armies. Good. Good to see you maintain tradition. <laughs> uh, Maybe the first mission. How, how did... Is this true? An army through the bog? He, told, he leans into you, Gudrun. Oh, well, I... I, I, I don't know what to say. Uh... I ask him because he's saying so. Maybe he knows. Well, what What's your intention with this army, King? Well, I can I <laughs> can I do like an insight roll on Tolman to see what he was going for with <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, with the army thing? Is he trying to like in like intimidate the the Tharbad folk? So that they would leave in fear of the army, or does he want him to be like feel secure because an army is coming? <laughs> make an insight I roll. want to corroborate his story, but I want to make sure I know what the story is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make an insight roll. <laughs> in the meanwhile, I'm sorry, but I need to leave. Yeah. Okay. Mm. We'll wrap up. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, that is. Mm. No, can't quite figure it out. <laughs> yeah, okay, you haven't got a clue what his intentions are. 
It's, it's Hobbit nonsense. <laughs> uh, I'll say yes. There is an army of dwarves coming through the swamp to admire the stonework of the northern peoples uh, so that we may learn as an as a natural tall tailor Gert is ashamed mm. of everyone involved in this. <laughs> um well that changes things um how how that army will be bound by the king's promise, won't it? So you can't do us any harm. That's what oh, we no. right? No harm intended. So how about we wait here for this army to arrive? How how far away are well, they? It, well, it'll probably be a little while. So we might as well rescue you now. <laughs> you know. okay. Think of us as the vanguard. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't want my people in there, so I think I, I think maybe and King, you well let's just do what we're going to do, shall we? I mean, if you want. Agreed. Agreed. And he kind of just moves this, like, little sack he's got of um, stuff. He just moves it to the side. Um, I guess we can do that. Bilbo Baggins, if that's your name. And we'll call the session there. <laughs> Are they expecting? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, with a dwarf army about to descend. Yep, on the way. Yeah, it's just Estelle doing his own comes out the fog. <laughs> <laughs> he opens his uh, opens his, uh, his his cowled hood and there's like a dwarven army. Just there, yeah, they just happens to keep hanging around. There we go. Escobar unveils his cloak and it's three dwarves stacked on top of each other. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that would be cool. That would be cool. Um, okay, so um, there we have it. Um, awesome. I, uh, I would have, at some point, Othaniel's going to get in before Gudrun can calm stuff down. And uh, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's like it'll be like um, when you're trying to hold your dog back and then it escapes. It's gonna be that like kind of you know one time it'll be ravaging the chickens before you know it. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Um, okay, right. Up too. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that. Yeah, it'll be. Um, it'll be. It'll. It'll be like a dog in the sausages. Um, <laughs> <laughs> to, to call an old saying phrase. yeah <laughs> an old brie saying well thank you very much Tolman for joining us and putting the um, the dwarven yeah. army amongst the um, far bad group it's like the cat 